What up, my fellow degenerate traders? I hope you had a phenomenal weekend, and I hope you're ready for what's potentially a very exciting, volatile week ahead. And that's exactly what I want to talk about in this video, because there's a lot going down this week. So I want to call it all out so it's on your radar, because I think there's a pretty solid chance that we see some large moves. So hopefully we're on the right side of it. On top of that, I want to do a little bit of some chart breakdown, just some interesting developments I found, a little bit of zero DTE options talk. And I also want to get into the most recent round of politicians slinging big money in the stock market. So obviously, if you like this type of daily update stuff, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to smash the like button. With that being said, let's rock. By the time the bell went dingity ding 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 to close out the trading day for today, Monday, September 18th, we did a pretty solid job of going nowhere. Taking a look at the S&P 500, it was up 0.06%. The Qs were down 0.04%. It was pretty much a no nothing day. So congratulations if you sold premium or if you did some solid scalping, I applaud you. But I do wanna let you know that today, most likely will be the most boring day of the week. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just one second. But first, let's take a quick peek of what's going on in the world of financial media, because hey, might have an influence on the market. S&P 500 closes little change Monday as traders await Fed policy meeting. Yes, I'll be going into this, but what you need to know is set an alert on your phone for this Wednesday, 2 p.m. That's when we get the results. And then at 2.30, that's when the chairman of the Fed, Jerome Powell, will be speaking. So obviously, that's going to be a big event in the market it get prepped for Wednesday. Positive news heading into this day, Bitcoin breaks above 27,000 for the first time in September. Check this out. Here's the weekly look of Bitcoin. I'm seeing some higher highs. I'm seeing some higher lows, a potential double bottom right here at 25K and it's bouncing off of that. I would love for my own Bitcoin investment to slowly but surely trend to the upside. So I know crypto has been a bit quiet lately, but hopefully, 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 fingers crossed, this is the moment where there's a little bit of bullish momentum to the upside. And obviously with a Fed rate decision coming up, there clearly could be an influence on currencies such as the dollar, but also such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. So if right now, if you've been diamond handing your crypto, looks like there's a little bit of a bullish reprieve. Now, before I really get into the rest of this video, I just want you to know this is the energy that you should have for the remainder of this video, but also for the remainder of the trading week. Obviously, a lot of trading has to do with psychology, has to do with a right, proper mental framework. And this is the page that I need everyone to be on. Shut the f up in your You should film me. I'm Instagram famous, you bum. Shut the up. That's what you need to know. You just gotta know that you're Instagram famous and everyone else is a bum. And it's that type of can-do attitude that I think could really, really bring your PL from the bottom left to the top right, getting one of those nice green golden PL equity curves. So totally not detached from normalcy by any means. All right, major news from the day. Stellantis could close 18 facilities under UAW deal. Here are the full details of its latest offer. Basically, they came in and they said, hey, we're gonna give you a 20 plus percent increase. And the United Auto Workers Union said, uh-uh, no way, honey. It's kind of interesting right now. So we have this particular union strike going on. Obviously in the world of Hollywood, there's still the actor and the writer strike. Recently, we have the UPS Teamsters and also there's murmurs of even more strikes coming down the pipeline. So obviously, depending on the industry it's in, you gotta pay attention to that subset sector within the market, especially if you're trading that stock, whether to the upside or to the downside, this could have a clear impact on automakers. So at least make sure it's on your radar. I don't want anyone to be missing this. White House team to go to Detroit early this week to help resolve UAW strike. The fact that this has only been going on for three to four days, depending on when you watch this, the fact that the White House is already wanting to get involved tells you how serious of an issue it actually could be. But what I thought was interesting was this was posted early this morning and not long after UAW president downplays White House involvement in strike talks. So right away, they're like, yeah, White House getting involved. It's that big of a deal. And then the UAW president's like, what are you talking about? Not really. And it does seem like the momentum, the person negotiating from the point of strength, probably the best way to put it, is the actual union. So it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. But fear not, as soon as politicians get involved, you could probably bet that it's going to get messed up in one way or another, which leads me to my next segment. 
If you've watched my content for any period of time, you know that I absolutely love to track what our politicians are doing in the market because I find it a little bit ridiculous that our elected officials, people who potentially have access to non-public information, can throw around money in the market. And yeah, maybe this is just anecdotal, but it seems like their timing is very, very impressive. Well, anyway, on that particular note, here's the most recent update of what politicians are doing with their money in all of our stock market. Breaking. Roe has introduced a new reform plan that bans stock trading from Congress, including their spouses, bans Congress from lobbying after, 12-year limits for Congress, bans lobbyists, and PAC donations. So this is a very interesting... I guess video that shows how some people that are in the political sphere are starting to agree that maybe, just maybe our elected officials shouldn't be trading in the market is exactly what they had to say. The American people are frustrated and exhausted with the corruption and role of big money in the halls of Congress. That is why I'm introducing a five point plan. First ban all PAC and lobbyist money to congressional campaigns. I, can I don't get behind take a that. dime of it. Second, ban completely stock trading and members of Congress from ever becoming lobbyists, activists like Unusual Whales, Quiver Quantitative, and the leaders at Crew have been mobilizing for this. Third, term limits for members of Congress. Fourth, term limits for Supreme Court justices. And fifth, an ethics code for Supreme Court justices. This is common sense. The people demand it. It's time we give them back their government and we reform in Washington. We should have bipartisan support for this five-point plan. Thank you, Madam Speaker, I yield back. Absolutely amazing. I honestly couldn't add anything else on top of that. Yes, I agree it's common sense. I agree that the populace wants it and it feels like the only reason it's getting hung up is because what? The people who have to vote it out so it's not possible don't want to because what? They're making too much money. What is it? I guess I'm just confused myself, like probably many of you are listening to this of, what are you talking about? Why are they able to trade stock? Why are their spouses able to trade stock? Personally, to me, it doesn't make sense, but it is actively going on. So while I have this platform, I'm gonna use it to call out some of the things that I personally perceive to be a little bit concerning to say the least. I do wanna add on one thing here though, I hear a lot of talk for stock trading. Don't forget that a lot of elected officials trade serious size referring to options trading. So I don't want this to be one of those loopholes where they're like, well, we're not trading stocks anymore. We're just trading options. So if this ever gets to the point that it's being voted on, gets through committee, goes from the House to the Senate or vice versa, whatever it is, I just want to personally make sure that it includes stocks and options and probably also crypto and futures. I think we should include it all and not just make it one of those specific things that it's exclusively stock. But while we're still here, while they're still able to do it, here is what the most recent developments in the world of politicians trading in the market has to give to us. Representative Susan Delbain just disclosed selling another 1.5 million of the tech giant Microsoft. In the last three years, she and her husband have now traded $65 million plus of Microsoft stock. Microsoft also happens to fall under Representative Delbain's congressional district. But how did they trade such high volume? Now, what's particularly interesting is the fact that both she and her husband work for Microsoft. In the last three years, her husband has bought up to 50 million worth of stock via RSUs. Now, what's even more interesting is the fact that Representative Delbain is the chair emeritus of the new Democratic coalition. This committee, according to the wiki, is a fiscal moderate pro-business body that supports free trade and high tech sector. Obviously, it's not that ridiculous to assume that Microsoft falls under that umbrella and guess which district the Microsoft Corporation falls under? Obviously, Representative Delbain. Folks, you can't make this up. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. Senator Dan Sullivan has disclosed 33 new stock trades. They were all sales totaling to $720,000. Now, obviously time will prove if this was a good sale or potentially not the best timing of sale, but regardless, the point I'm trying to make here is the fact that there's serious money involved with politicians actively trading in the market. I, for one, 
find it frustrating. I find it very frustrating and you probably do too. Now, in the meantime, as we're waiting for, I don't know what I would consider a bit more logic to enter the political sphere as it overlaps with the stock market, I do want to call out Streepy. Streepy is a robo advisor that has various AI trading co-pilots, one of which is the USCB, the United States Congress buys co-pilot trading strategy. And what you need to know about this is the fact that it mimics and it tracks exactly what our politicians are doing. So another way to put that is whatever they're buying, you could be buying and whatever they're selling, you could be selling. So if you want to trade like a politician, make sure you're checking out Street Beats, USCB. And while you're there, make sure you check out their other AI trading co-pilots. Or if you want, you could even build your own. And now, Let's talk about the week ahead. So for today, Monday, September 18th, there's really not a whole heck of a lot going on, but for the rest of the week, there are some major macroeconomic events. For example, on Tuesday, early in the morning, crack of dawn, 5 a.m., we're gonna get the CPI report for the Eurozone. We're also gonna get the building permits for the US at 8.30. Wednesday is the big day, as I alluded to before. Please mark your calendar. We're gonna get the FOMC results, basically the interest rate decision results, at 2 p.m. And then Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Fed, will be speaking at 2.30. On Thursday, we get the initial jobless claims. We're going to get existing home sales. And then on Friday, we get the PMI. So all of these are important, but I would argue the report or the decision that has the biggest impact on the stock market is going to be the FOMC announcement at 2, but more so what Jerome Powell has to say at 2.30. And what I mean by that is, is the market going to interpret his commentary as being hawkish or are they going to interpret it to be dovish? And obviously that could push the market down or up depending on how the market really interprets the vibe of what Jerome Powell has to say. At this moment in time, there's a 99% chance that the federal funds rate will remain unchanged. I would be betting on the fact that we're going to get no change. I don't think there's going to be a surprise to the upside or the downside. I think we're going to hold it constant at 5.25%. What's going to move the market is once again, what Powell has to say about the situation. And yes, we might be getting another rate hike between now and the end of the year. If we do, it's most likely going to be in November, but I'm hesitant to say anything too special about it because between now and then we have more CPI reports, more PCE reports, more retail sales reports, more unemployment reports. There's a lot of major macroeconomic events that are going to happen between now and that November meeting that in terms of putting odds on the situation, I would say maybe we just need to wait and see how some of that data comes in. Fear not though, Americans can barely afford homes and that's a problem for Biden. Well, obviously it's a problem for Biden because a lot of people vote by their checkbook. As in, if they're feeling good about their finances, they keep the same person in office. If they're not feeling so good, they go on to the next person because they think, hey, what's the worst that this could actually go? But anyway, obviously with interest rates being so sky high, we're seeing mortgages and homes just absolutely inflated. Obviously the average person like you and me is feeling a little bit of a pinch, but don't worry. Janet Yellen has said she sees no signs of the US economy in a downturn. I'm gonna ask you, do you think that the US economy is in a downturn? Because I can tell you this, someone like Janet Yellen, the treasury secretary, I think she's a little bit out of tune, a little bit out of touch with what the average person is going through. And obviously they're just gonna go up there and say whatever lines they're trained to say, because that's what these people do. And obviously it's frustrating, but for them to say there's no signs of the US economy being in a downturn, eh, I find that a little bit suspect. This week, in terms of earnings, we're not in earnings season, but I do want you to know about Wednesday after the market closes, we're gonna hear from FedEx. A lot of the times it's commonly considered that FedEx is a barometer for the success and or failure of the market. So curious myself to know if FedEx beats their numbers or misses on their numbers later this week, Wednesday after that FOMC decision. So anyway, Wednesday, pay attention to FedEx. I definitely know I will be. Now, very quickly, just want you guys to know there is a new newsletter. It's in the description the video. This is free, F-R-E-E. -E. If you're interested in getting my breakdown of what happened in the market, what to look forward to next, you could sign up for this, macros.locals.com. I give you all the major macroeconomic events. I give you all the earnings that I think you'll be interested in. I give you the seasonality for every single day of the upcoming week. And then on top of that, I've started to include how the zero DT option strategy is going and also charts of interest. So with these last two in mind, I do want you to know that for today, September 18th, I called out one zero DT trade, and this happened to be a call credit spread on the SPY, 372 spread by 373 obviously 
the fact that we closed out today below 372 means that this was a winner so thus far in the week we are one for one let's see if we can keep that streak continuing and then also in terms of charts of interest i just want to really quickly show you what i'm seeing here in terms of the s p 500 the spy uh i'm seeing lower highs higher lows a consolidating bullish pennant i'm looking for the breakout or the breakdown i'm not necessarily biased one way or the other i'm just waiting for price action to tell me which way i should be going in terms of the cues we almost had a breakdown today we were on the bottom side of this trend line but right at the end of the day we saw a little bit of reverse to the upside bit of strength there in terms of individual equities I'm noticing a breakdown of Microsoft so I want to bring that to your attention we're below the trend line multiple closes below it if it can't hold this 327 329 area there might be more downside in the short term for Microsoft I also want to point out Nvidia which also barely saved itself today we have this nice trend line after its earnings gap up from back in may of earlier this year and we open up below it but it successfully did push to close above it so no breakdown there yet but definitely on my watch list and then finally the one that i find to be the most surprising because i didn't think it would get this way or look this good but carvana at least in my eyes is looking bullish i see an inverse shoulder head shoulder i see a cup and handle i'm looking for carvana to get above and hold above 56 because if so that could open up the next leg to the upside in the ticker cvna that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the daily update. If you want me to include something else in this video or these types of videos, let me know in a comment below. Obviously, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button and I'll catch you in the stream tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. bright and early. Hope to see you there.